Feel the History is more than a series of history documentaries. Behind it, there is a group of students making up the Feel the History family. A family that has changed members, yet has never lost its original purpose and intention. Their goals upon conception were to have students doing the job of real historians and filmmakers, making history documentaries about the Evansville area. These students are still doing the job of historians by getting involved in the community and finding the history stories to be told from the Evansville area. They also still do the job of real filmmakers. This is the story of those students and their family. For Feel the History students, this is the culmination of their semester-long goals. A sense of accomplishment is felt as their peers and elders see the final product for the first time. But where does it all begin? This is the formal preview given before an episode of Feel the History airs on WNIN. The students creating this episode are not the first to reach this point and accomplish their goals. This is the first episode of the third year of production. For the answer, we need to talk to two men who four years ago had an idea for a new, engaging, and exciting class for history lovers and technology aficionados alike. To make documentaries inspired by productions by Ken Burns, one of the most influential American documentary makers of the late 20th century. 2005, the summer of 2005, we're at USI, and we're at this luncheon, and Terry calls me over, and I thought, this is probably going to end up badly, because every time he calls me over, he's got a big idea. And he says, I've got, I want to write this grant with you, and I want you to, we're going to turn your students into mini Ken Burns, and they're going to learn history through the documentary filmmaking process. And the first thing I said was, we can't do that because I don't know how to make documentaries. I don't know how to use a camera and video editing. I'm not a computer person. And he said, well, the kids can do that. And I said, well, they might be able to, but I can't. And he said, well, I'll teach you. So I just, okay, whatever. Let's write the grant. I figured that would put him off for a while. So we started writing this grant. We spent the school year writing the grant. Terry calls me and he says the equipment's in. We need to get together. So about two weeks later, we get together. We spend probably three weeks getting the equipment unboxed, setting the computers up, and he teaches me. He gives me a crash course in video editing and documentary filmmaking. And then when school started that fall, we had the first class. I had um, 18 great kids, uh, four seniors and 14 juniors. And, uh, and we, that December, we had our first show, our first 30-minute episode, ready to go to Channel 9, um, and it ran. And since then, we've done uh, 10 more 30-minute episodes for Channel 9. Since assignments for projects are not given, students have to come up with an idea on their own. Well, our project usually um, starts out by we pick our own topic, get it approved, and then usually our topic is with my previous group members that always had to do something with war and guns. So I mean that was, that was an interesting topic at least. Uh, Once they have an idea for a project in their head, the students will start doing research. Reading through local history books and getting on the internet will give students an idea of how the general story of their piece will be told. The next step is to try to gather all the information they possibly can on the topic. Knowing the topic also means understanding the time period surrounding the topic. Students often end up studying an entire era surrounding their subject. They gain this knowledge by going to Willard Library and talking to local experts. As the mental image of their piece takes a more solid shape in the mind's eye, the students try to get all the pieces to tell the story. They make more trips to Willard and the USI archives to get as many pictures on their topic as they can find. After an exhaustive search of the public archives, students will turn to the experts they gathered information from for pictures. These are often the same people who will provide interviews to help tell the story. The final piece of visual information required is video. Any visual aspect of the project, such as still pictures or video, is referred to as B-roll. Since the projects often deal with topics from before the widespread use of moving images, video B-roll other than interviews is often the smallest part of the project. Since pictures and video can't tell the story themselves, a narration is required. The narration tells the story while the video shows it. This is often the most time-consuming and most crucial part to do well. The narration starts out as a script, 
which will go through many drafts edited by others and will finish as something completely different from its origins. Once the script is final, it's off to the sound booth to record it. In the booth, the person chosen to be the narrator will often go through the script many times to get it just right. The raw recording is then moved to a computer, where it will spend hours being chopped and smoothed in Adobe Audition, a sound editing program. The clean narration is the first thing to be laid into the Premiere project. Adobe Premiere is a program that full-length movies are made on. Here lies all the tools required to cut the film, create animations, and add all the pieces that bring the project together. This is where the students will show their artistic side. Hours are spent deciding what picture or piece of video b-roll matches what part of the script. They will go back and forth trying different pieces in places to get the best match possible. Use interviews and stitch in the interviews in between the b-roll so it all flows, throw some transitions in with the um, different pictures and everything, try to make it tell a story through pictures um, along with the script that you're uh, reading at the same time. Music is then often added after the project is mostly complete to bring out an emotion or to give the emotion of the time period. Once each group feels that their project is up to their standards, they will send their project off to critical review. The critical review team is comprised of historians, technology experts, experts in movie making, and prominent EVSC employees and board members. They will look for things that should be changed in the project. They will look at the B-roll to make sure it fits the story and at the animations to see if they are used in an effective way. They look at the story overall and decide if it makes sense and shows the emotion of the story. Critical review is really nice because that's really your, it's like a controlled release. You can, you can release it to people who have no idea what your, your basis is and what you're talking about. They can give you feedback on what they liked, didn't like, what they didn't know, what they didn't understand, and then you can go back and correct it to try to make it more easy to understand for the general audience that's, that'll be viewing it. Once the project returns from the critical review team, it will go through a class critical before the experts' opinions are heard by the class. The class gives suggestions to improve the project just the same as the review team would. The students make note of the suggestions made about their project and take it back into the editing room for a few days. Once the project reaches the quality level required by the Field of History program, it is considered complete. The project will go with the others to be compiled into an episode to be shown at the next formal preview. Once the episode reaches WNIN, it will be played many times as part of the channel's daily programming. Episodes from the first year are still airing, and the class hopes to keep producing episodes for many more years. Some of the projects even get submitted for Adobe's School Innovation Awards. In 2008, the class's piece on the 1937 flood won the award, and is now, along with the class, being nationally recognized on Adobe's website. One of the real um, distinguishing elements of the class is that the, the students are the workers and, and hands-on learning kinds of workers, uh, applied learning if you will, and the, the teacher is the coach. It's really, um, it appears to be very student driven and that's the best learning there is. You have to plan everything on your own, get your own sources, b-roll, interviews, script, you have to write, you have to do everything yourself. It's not a pre-planned structure like every other class in high school. Okay. It exemplifies the kinds of um, programs and, and instruction that, um, at least I can speak for myself, a, as um, I am um, encouraged um, for the students by, by their experience like Field of History presents to them because it has, at so many different levels, value in learning and application. Um, in post-secondary, whether it's college or, or, or um, career, I think it has great applications, so it has terrific value. I've been very impressed by the, the caliber of, of the talent, and not, just, and not just that students have been able to, to put together such uh, interesting historic packages, but the artistry that they're actually bringing to, to the packages um, and, it, and it goes far beyond, I think, what, at least what I, I first expected to see. I, I, was, I was very impressed, still am very impressed with the program.
In the future, the program hopes to keep growing in popularity and recognition. It also hopes to keep expanding its community connections by creating more ties with historical organizations and groups of historians. Um, I, I've had people say, oh, you know, I saw this, and, and, and I, or I've, I've, I heard about this, and at first, first it seems that some of the people that I was hearing from were educators or retired educators, so maybe they had heard about it from some other circles that, you know, this was happening. But then I started hearing about it from just um, people that might be in using the Special Collections Department, using some aspect of, of our archives. And so I, at that point, I knew that it's not just it's not just my perspective, it's not just me thinking that this is really something uh, cool and amazing for, for Evansville, but that it had, it had gone beyond the, uh, the, the history community or the, the community of history experts, if you will, and have, has become something, uh, something larger and more important. With every new connection, dreams of bigger and broader focused projects become closer to a reality. In the near future, the class hopes to send a crew to Gettysburg for a new project involving the famous battleground. Perhaps one day, the class will have a national audience. If that day comes, the class will still be run the same way, with high school students working as historians and making documentaries to higher a standard than any other high school class is held to. That it will grow as big as it can be. I think the students' interest is already a mark of its success, and, and, and their success in um, incorporating history and technology is, is very evident. So uh, I think that um, there probably is, um, it, it is, it is limited only by our resources probably, because I think it, I think it resonates with the interests of the students and the skill sets that they'll need to go forward. Most classes, teachers will give you a topic assignment. You have to write the paper for it, and then that's what you do. And then some classes, you got to make the PowerPoint with like the little pictures off Google and stuff, which is your work, but not really so much. But here, the voice over the narration, the pictures, the interviews, that's all us. That's all our work. And when we have that finished product done, we get a show. We're actually proud of that product, and we want people to see it. It's great at the end of the day to look at the TV on PBS and see your show and be like, I did that. Really pretty cool, I mean, all how much your eyes are open to the world that's around you and the history that's right beneath your feet.